we're going to talk about different types of fund structures that investors can invest in. This is relevant for you as a general partner or as a limited partner. So what are the different types of fund structures? We'll have a separate video on the difference between regular syndication and a, and a fund. Syndication itself is actually kind of easy to understand, which is you buy something and you syndicate it for that something. Whereas a fund is basically you creating a fund to invest in multiple assets. The investor doesn't know necessarily beforehand what kind of assets you might invest in. Now, and then we can talk about like the pros and cons of fund and versus syndication. But before that, I want to talk about what types of funds are there. But spoiler alert, People choose funds because it gives a little bit more diversification. If one property doesn't do well and it can be offset by the gains of another property, so it has some built-in diversification. The con of that is not many people are doing funds, especially the newer ones, because in order to raise money for a fund, people basically have to trust that you have good fiduciary duty on the fund. And if you don't have a chart record, people are not gonna put money into a arbitrary thing. Like just have to trust you that you can put it into good use. So that's the very close pros and cons of funds versus syndication. But today I want to talk about different types of funds. Funds are a newer concept, at least with the folks I work with. And there are some misconceptions about funds. I want to break funds into three characteristics. So three dimensions. Each dimension is two choices. So three dimensions, two to the three is eight total different types of funds. Now, it turned out that four of those uh, eight are not like doesn't make any sense to have that kind of combination. And then four of them are what we will talk about. The first dimension in which you measure a fund is whether it's blind fund or customizable fund. Blind fund means the LP doesn't know how the GP is going to allocate the money of that fund. A customizable fund is the LP knows what asset they are purchasing and they can explicitly specify how much money they want to put into each underlying asset of that fund. The second dimension in which we measure funds is whether it's a regular fund or a fund of funds. Just a regular fund means that the underlying assets, the fund manager is usually the lead general partner on it. Basically they have a fund, but each of the underlying assets, they're the main dog. And the fund of funds is where the underlying asset is actually managed by someone else, another sponsor. Their job is to know a bunch of different lead sponsors and raise money basically for them, but they create a fund of funds. And then the third dimension is whether it's open-ended or closed-ended. Open-ended means it's evergreen. It will continue for a year, two years, three years. Closed-ended means it has an explicit close date. So those are the three dimensions and you can see each dimension has two choices. The first most common combination is a blind fund that is close ended. That is literally just called a close ended fund or a fund. So when people say fund, they usually mean a blind close ended fund. And who is doing that? They are used by the best syndicators or the most well-known syndicators in this industry, like Disrupt Equity, Brandon Turner, Joe Fairless, Kim Radiker's fund, Mac Capital, that does like industrial buildings, Vertical Street Ventures has a fund. Some of the most well-known players, they are usually file six seats, so I don't mind saying that. They usually have built up quite a bit of a marketing presence. Some of them also build up some operational expertise. Basically, they're just like, I think my LPs want diversification. So this is GP saying, I don't like the fact I'm raising you know, money for every single deal. I want to have a, a fund that lasts for three months because I'm buying two or three assets in that two or three months. The second common fund is very similar to the first. It's also blind. It's also a fund but it's open-ended. People often refer to this as just open-ended fund because blind is more common than customizable. Blind has been there since the beginning and the reason you're creating a fund, you are, you, you are essentially like saying, you know, I have a chart record, trust me. And as an LP, you're not really investing in for that syndication, you're investing in the sponsor and that's technically fine. The sponsor matters more than the deal they're, they're purchasing. So open-ended fund, like who's doing that? It's also like the biggest dogs. 
is also the most well-known people in the space. Basically, they want to keep it evergreen. They are less common than the first scenario, which is a close-ended. So if people say open-ended fund, they usually mean open-ended blind fund. So the first case is called just fund. The second one is close-ended fund. So I would say close-ended fund is like, I would say 80% of the funds in the world. And then open-ended is like 10% of the funds in the world. And there are eight choices. So that's 90%. And then the rest 10% is like the rest of them. <laughs> okay. And this is by number. And this is definitely by volume, like in terms of the money raised. Blackstone has like one close-ended fund that basically, you know, <laughs> raised more than 99% of the money out there. The third most common type of fund is blind open-ended fund of funds. Let's talk about why fund of funds and open-ended go together. Fund of funds are used usually used by co-sponsors to raise money for different projects. Their job is to go out and figure out all the lead sponsors, the good operators to invest with. They are the connector. They're connecting the people they know with all the operators. They're kind of like a technical account manager for the investors. They're also kind of like the financial advisor almost, but in, not in the security sense, but just their duty is connecting those two. It makes almost no sense that they are doing a fund of funds and it's close-ended. If it's close-ended, that means you only do once. The whole point is to create a legal structure that you can invest with multiple general partners. That's why a fund of funds and open have to go together. It almost makes no sense that fund of funds is a close-ended fund. It just makes no sense. That's why out of the eight combinations, four of them just... It, they don't exist. It's very rare for them to exist. So like who are doing those? They are usually fund managers that is that knows a bunch of operators and they are raising money for them. Just to be clear, Casual Portal support all the funds, but this is Casual Marketplace channel. We can create a separate video on whether investors should invest in those. My general opinion is that it's absolutely okay because you get to know the fund manager who will decide based on you know who's good. It's almost like you have a single point of contact to know about syndications. So it's totally fine. And you may say, oh, if I invest in a fund, they invest in another syndication, will the returns get reduced? No, they will set that up in a way that you basically make the same return as if you were investing directly into that syndication because the fund manager is incentivized to create what's called the indifference curve meaning that you shouldn't make more money by investing directly with the syndication than the fund so as an example if someone is investing fifty thousand dollars into the regular syndication they will get like certain amount of split but if the fund manager is bringing a million dollars to the syndication then they will get a better split and then you might say well why would the lead sponsor or the lead operator do that the reason they do that is they don't have to deal with you know 20 or 50 more people that have all this investor relations it's it's a win-win-win for everyone this is for blind open-ended fund of funds the last type of fund in which i want to mention is what's called customizable open-ended fund of funds. That's basically saying I have a fund of fund that's open-ended and it has multiple syndications underneath it. It has multiple properties I'm raising for and I will let the investors decide how much they want to invest in each. I believe it's because it gives the investor a little bit more choice on choosing how much to put it into each syndication and that's perfectly reasonable. But I also believe that it's one way for the general partner who don't have as much of a track record to at least make it seem like a syndication. I will also say that in that world, <laughs> um, the legal counsel doesn't like it. The legal counsel is just like, you are just raising money for multiple syndications and you're just creating this fund so that you can avoid creating PPMs and legal documents for all the other uh, syndications. I'm not here to debate on that. I think that's a very creative approach. This is a good fund, perfectly valid fund to invest into. It's just like the third scenario, which is a blind open-ended fund of funds. This is a customizable open-ended fund of funds. I will say that the blind is a little bit more common because when it becomes customizable, it creates a lot of uh, accounting because then you have to track like how much is invested into each asset or that and everyone's investment is different so it has a lot more complexity why do people do it people do it because remember what i said at the beginning if you don't have a track record people are not likely to believe you as a general partner and so general partner in turn will create the underlying asset and give the investor that choice if i were the investor 
my philosophy has always been I trust the GP more than the deal. So I will let the GP make the decision instead of me making the decision. Because if I knew about the deal so well, I might as well just like invest with the, directly with the syndicator. So that's what I will say on that. So these are the four types of funds. I hope that gives a little bit a systematic way of thinking about funds. Thanks for watching again and happy investing.